The Create mod lets us build many cool machines, interesting contraptions, all powered by rotational force, known as stress units or SU, which we produce using sources like water wheels and windmills, or a little bit later game, even with steam engines. Now to transfer the SU from our source to our machines, we have a few different methods that we can use, including belts, shafts, and cogwheels. And today we're gonna to be looking at Create Optical, an add-on for Create that adds an interesting and unique way of transferring stress units, among other things. And that is using light beams, like this beautiful one here. I, what, what, you don't see it? Huh, it's right here, it's beautiful. I don't understand why you can't see it. Just kidding. This beam is actually outside of the visual spectrum. We actually produce several different wavelengths of light in this mod. So let's take a look at those. This is the optical source block. It emits different wavelengths of light depending on how fast you rotate it. Now this affects what kind of light it is, how far it'll transfer, how much stress units, and all of that. Now it can emit four kinds of light. First is radio waves, which we don't think of as light, but they are from one to eight RPM. It transfers eight to 64 stress units units, depending on how fast you split. Basically, it's eight stress units per rotation per minute, but this one can also transfer the farthest. It can travel up to 128 blocks. Next is microwaves, which require 9 to 32 RPM, stress units 72 to 256, and it can travel up to 96 blocks. Visible light, which is 33 to 128 RPM, and 264 to 1024 stress units, though it can only travel up to 64 blocks. And then lastly, we have gamma rays, which require 129 to 256 rotations per minute and can do from 1032 to 2048 stress units. They all share different similarities as well as a few differences. So let's take a look at those. One thing they have in common is that they can pass through glass or glass panes, which is made obvious with the visible light. Now we can change this down to say microwaves. It's still passing through. You can see this receiver is still receiving light. And and then if we change it even up to gamma rays, it is still passing through. Now with visible light, you can change the color of the beam using either stained glass or stained glass panes. Now as we can see here with visual light, entities actually block the light from passing through. This is true for mobs as well as players. Let's pop out. Oh, well, that was not intended. Move, don't just let it. Anyway, tinted glass will actually block it, not let it through. Now because we didn't, uh, you know, violate our pig enough, we're going to use it for another demonstration here. Don't worry, Mr. Pig, this will hurt. If we change change this to gamma rays, you'll see that it actually does pass through entities and deals damage. So you can use this for, say, a mob farm or anything like that. But again, it, this is a difference between the other three types of light versus the gamma rays. So the basic form of this is we're going to transfer from an optical source to an optical receiver, transferring those stress units, rotational speed, as well as direction, and something called polarization, which we're going to be taking a look at here in a little bit. We use encased mirrors in order to rotate our light light beam by 90 degrees. You can see here we can reflect, doesn't lose any power or speed. We're taking a look at the absorption polarizing filter in order to talk about polarization, how that kind of works with the beams here. So you see if I put this down, it gets weaker and that's because whenever we take random to any form of polarization, it halves it. Now you can see here if I rotate through these, they're all being cut in half. Now if I change this to horizontal, you see it's full force, that's because this is also set to horizontal. And if I set this to, say, a diagonal, so it actually halves it as well, just like it was coming from random, either diagonal does the same thing. Now setting this to a contradictory, say, vertical, and, oh, that's vertical as well. All right, so they're horizontal, you see the two contradict each other, so it actually cancels each other out. So there are differences between one and the other, it gives you half, unless they're contradictory, then it gives none. So let's say the forward diagonal and the back diagonal would be contradictory, the vertical and the horizontal. And then again, random with anything else just kind of gives you the half. So you see, you can actually have it again. So you can have it again and have it again or whatever you need to do. So you can do math using different polarizations. Now this sure requires 1,024 stress units, but what it's transferring through isn't that much. It's actually only 128 stress units. So you're losing quite a bit of stress units 
using this method of having it using polarization. If we were just to put a speed controller in here, we control this, it lowers the SU put in as well as the SU out. So personally, I think these polarizing filters are, are cool. I think there's some cool things there. I would be interested to see some more mechanics attached to the polarization because right now it's mostly just, as far as I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong in the, uh, in the comments below, but, but as far as I can tell, it's just for having or doing some math with this, but that actually loses you stress units, so it's, it's counterproductive. Next, we're gonna be looking at the polarizing beam splitter. Now what this does is it takes a beam from a source and it splits it depending on what its polarization is. Horizontal, the beam comes in and turns at a right degree angle. Vertical, it heads straight through. Now if we use either the diagonals or random, it actually splits it evenly between the two different directions. It's also worth noting here that the polarizations from these beams will be vertical heading straight and horizontal going east out of this. So if you apply your polarization filters, uh, you'll see that it'll do the typical things that the filters would have done to just a random regular beat. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the optical sensor, which can be placed on ceiling, wall, or floor. Now, as you can see here, there are different modes. So intensity is how intense the beam is, right? And this emits a redstone signal corresponding to that intensity. It's showing my intensity is 15. Now, if I come in here to say 33, you can see that's not affecting my intensity. Turns out intensity is affected by polarization. So if I come up here, polarization cuts it in half and then it halves our intensity. We can then change this and do it again. There we go, three. So you can see that by changing the polarization, it does actually change the intensity. The next mode is color and we get a different redstone signal based on the color. So cyan gives us six, lime green 10, and red gives us one. Now I'm not gonna go through all the different colors here. You can kind of experiment with those on your own. But that could be used for sending a different strength of a signal. You could interject different blocks of different colors there. Some interesting things you could do with that. And then lastly, we have digital. Now digital is unique in the sense that it allows the light to pass through and sends off a redstone signal whether there is a beam or not. So say I block this, no beam, beam. Now this is a light source that's emitting light and it'll actually take on the color of whatever the beam is. If it's in the visible range, it actually pulls the color through regardless of what kind of beam it's going to. It doesn't have to be visible range. Interesting. Also note that you can right click this and it will turn into just a bulb. It'll still carry the color, but it won't actually be a light source, which is interesting in case you don't want these to be light sources or whatever it might be. This can be an interesting way to have, you know, lights running on your base. You can just change this to an invisible range. And then if you block the, oh, it's gamma. <laughs> gamma transfers through into these. So if we come down here, you know, we're only taking eight stress units for this thing, but now I can turn lights on and off by blocking or, or stopping or whatever on this and you can have a little string on it. So that's a, an interesting use case for that and I, I just thought of it right now. So next we're going to be looking at the beam condenser. Essentially what this does is it takes three beams in as inputs and it outputs a combination of those. Now I've noticed for the visible light spectrum, if you have multiple colors, the, the beam that comes out is white, but if you do have the same color, it will come out all the same color. So we'll use red for right now. We're going to need the heavy optical receiver versus the regular one because this allows you to essentially put out more stress units than you could with a single beam, right? So so let's crank this up into the gamma range. Interesting enough, it's kind of like wavering light because you're still getting the visible spectrum from here. And essentially what this shows you here is, I don't think these matter anymore. Um, these can be whatever level they are, as long as there is one visible range going through, you're going to get a visible beam on the end. So essentially, if you want to see this beam, 5,120 stress units is the highest you can get. Now I can create this out to just do completely gamma, and I can get 6,144 stress units. So this is the maximum you can transfer over one optical beam. It requires you to combine three maximum beams here. The reason for the heavy one in the is because these are already running at the fastest RPM, which is 256. So what this does is it allows the stress units to come through without exceeding the RPM of 256, which I think is a clever way to look at it. So if we come in here, we'll put our stress and RPM. If we half this, for example, we get some interesting things here. So essentially, if they're all coming in at 128, you're going to get 128, but you're going to get the combined stress units. But, and it starts doing some funky math once you kind of change those up. So you could get also get a custom RPM here if you want it, but again, 
with the mechanical speed controllers, I don't see why you'd want to do this method in order to, but if you want to using this, you're most likely cranking in full blown all the way so you can get that maximum yield. Because it's gamma ray, it can only go 32 blocks. So that is a limitation of it running here. And lastly, we're gonna look at the beam focuser, which takes a beam from the top and it uses it to craft different things. So as you see here, we're using microwave to cook things. Using visible light, we can create a mirror from stained glass or regular glass panes, which we use in our different mirror recipes. Now you can apply different items to this, for example, sand. And applying sand and visible light, you can essentially use this as a sandpaper. Any sanding recipe applied to create, you can do so. Even modded stuff, as you can see here, or your traditional kind of rose quartz. Another example of this is with dyes. If you apply a dye to this and run visible light through it, it will apply that color to whatever you're trying to dye. And by applying microwaves through it, you're able to cook things just like a microwave. I think it's actually a pretty clever little twist on that. So let's see it in action here. As we said, just visual light against the glass plane will give you a mirror. And by applying a dye, we can dye just about anything here. So we'll throw this candle on here and it'll run through here. With Again, with visual light, it'll give us a blue candle. Now, as you can see, this is more efficient than just say applying dye. Generally, you only need one dye to dye lots of things. So very effective and a useful piece. There. Now, if we change this to microwaves, we can see we're able to, oh, on there. <coughs> anyway, we're able to cook things. So you can use this as another line or way to cook your different foods or whatever. Now changing this back to visual light. If we apply sand to this as the filter, we can then process any of our sanding things like we talked about. There you go. Super nice way to automate um, sanding down your rose quartz because I don't know, I find it frustrating to have to do it all by hand. Now I just wanted to at the very end here cover some of the different recipes for these components. So if you take tinted glass, spray some water on it and stamp it and repeat that five times, you're going to get your polarized filter mirror. You can create using the way that we looked at before with beam focuser, but in this case, before you have a beam focuser, you can create it using, again, water, stamp being twice five times and again here's the that recipe so all of these different components use these uh sequences use ga to look at it you know some of them are a little bit more expensive you see here copper and say gold using gold similar very similar recipe but takes 16 a little bit more pricey and then uh rose quartz here only takes four but you need the uh, sequenced focusing in it which is an interesting part i don't know which light specifically is looking for here maybe it takes all it might be something to take a look at and then lastly we have the optical um component Component which here which uses an amethyst shard uh, some glass some sheets and repeat it again five times so that is create optical hopefully i didn't miss anything if there if i did please leave a comment um, if there's any other mods like this or create add-ons or mods in general that you'd like me to review please let me know i really enjoyed this one and uh, i hope to catch you guys in the next one thank you have a nice day